Did you know? On January 6, 1412, Joan of Arc became the youngest child born to a peasant family near Champagne, France. During her short life, Joan experienced divine visions and led the French resistance to several victories during the Hundred Years' War, before being captured, sold, and martyred due to the political discrepancy over the true King of France. Due to the survival of lengthy examination and trial transcripts, it is commonly accepted that more is known about Joan of Arc than any other person from the Middle Ages. When Joan was a teenager, she referred to herself as La Pucella, French for the maid. Around this time, she received visions from St. Michael, St. Catherine, and St. Margaret, in which she was instructed to recover France from English domination. Joan never learned to read or write, but was very skilled with her hands, which probably helped her greatly when Dauphin Charles VII, the disputed king and son of Charles the Mad, after a thorough examination from a panel of theologians, sent her on a relief mission to the Siege of Orleans. Ignoring the dismissive attitude of the officers there, Joan led a campaign that lifted the months-long siege in just nine days, and after a few more victories, Charles VII was rewarded with a coronation ceremony that ended the disputed succession to the throne. Well, sort of. Joan was soon captured by the Burgundians and sold to the English, who were in alliance together. Under the guise of the Roman Inquisition, the jealous Duke of Bedford, who attempted to claim France on behalf of England for his young nephew Henry VI, put Joan on trial for heresy with neither legal representation nor any testimonial evidence against her. He believed condemning Joan would undermine the popularity of new King Charles VII, who had appointed her to her military position. Joan exhibited fascinating wit and intellect during her trial, at one point answering a trick question about whether she knew she was in God's grace. If she answered no, she would be confessing guilt. If she answered yes, she would convict herself of heresy, since doctrine stated that no one could be certain of being in God's grace. But Joan replied with, If I am not in God's grace, may God put me there, and if I am, may God so keep me. It was later discovered that many clerics and witnesses were forced against Joan under threat of death, and the English-appointed bishop administering the trial denied Joan's appeals to Rome, which should have halted the proceedings. On May 30, 1431, in front of a crucifix, Joan of Arc was burned at the stake for heresy. After her death, the English burned her twice more and threw her ashes in the Seine River. Just 25 years later, in 1456, Pope Calixtus III reopened an investigation into Joan's case that concluded she was innocent and a martyr. During the 16th century, she became a symbol of the Catholic League, an initiative that intended to drive Protestantism out of France. She was beatified in 1909 and canonized by Pope Benedict XV in 1920. Joan of Arc was named a patron saint of France, and her story has since inspired countless movies, books, and stage productions, including George Bernard Shaw's play, St. Joan, the famous 1948 film Joan of Arc with Ingrid Bergman, and the 1928 silent film The Passion of Joan of Arc starring Maria Falconetti, which was chosen by the Vatican as one of the top 45 films of all time. Can you guess which saint portrayed Joan of Arc on stage in 1894? Six years after entering the Carmelite order and only three years before her death, St. Therese of Lisieux performed the lead role in a play about the story of Joan of Arc. And that's how a 19-year-old war heroine became the saint we know today.